Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So today in our video, we are going to... Man, my hair is getting out of control. All right, so today in our video, we are going to talk about what does it look like when um, inequalities, systems of inequalities have no solutions or infinite solutions. And also, in addition, uh, we are going to talk about how to find answers in a systems of inequalities. All right, so let's go. Okay, all right. So for uh, what I think is the last lesson of this week, um, we're going to talk about identifying solutions in, uh, in systems of equations. All right. Now, uh, originally, I was going to even do an example with you, but there's really no need to because the amount of time that we need to take to make the graph possible just to say that there's no solution that's just sounds that just sounds like a, not a very good return on our time investment all right so i'm just going to show this to you right now now i want to get this out of the way all right and i'm going to i'm going to use my graffiti pen for emphasis where's my special graffiti pen oh there we go all right i'm going to use my gigantic graffiti pen for a special purpose here i'm going to tell you now there's no such thing as one solution all right, to systems of inequalities, as I've shown you earlier, uh, yesterday, right? Because there's no way that they will ever just meet at one point, but somehow when you shade it, that doesn't count. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you can't have one point and then say all this stuff is the solution at the same time, right? It's not, that's not the point, right? So let's just get this out of the way. There's no such thing, all right, as using... Uh, as having one solution in a systems of inequalities. You can have many, right? Because it's, it's, it could be in an area. Actually, let me just use the region's questions. Like so, let me use a highlighter actually, right? So you can have this, you can have this as a solution, right? Where there are many answers and you can also have no solutions like so and having infinite solutions. So let me, let me point this out to you then. What is it, how, how would a systems of inequalities look like, or one of the examples of such, when you have a, when you have a system, right, of inequalities? Well, this could happen. Actually, if you want, you can close your eyes and imagine, right, what that would look like, right? So look. So if you have a system of equations where this equation is greater than whatever that is, you will shade everything above, right? But at the same time, if you have this equation here, where it's less than or equal to, or le actually if it's a solid line, right? Less than or equal to. And it will look like that. Right? So of course they'll never cross paths. So for an example again, for this something like this to be greater than or greater than or equal to for this one, less than or less than or equal to, right? That's what you end up having, right? Where there's just like the, the shading areas, the areas of the shade here, in this case, the purple, and in this case, the orange, they don't cross paths, so there aren't any solutions, okay? Got that? Now, a second way of happening is you can have the same equation so you can have the same equations, right? So you see how there's a yellow line and a red line here. Let's say they're actually the same equation and they are facing the same direction, meaning they're both either greater than, greater than, equal to, both less than or less than, equal to, right? So let me demonstrate this to you. I want to make this thicker, actually. Hold on, let's see. Is it better? Okay, there's no improvement there. What's going on? All right. Like this. If they're both like this, Right, so I gotta sh let's say I gotta shade it again with uh with blue maybe, all right, like this. If they're both the same equations and they're both going the same directions when you shade it, then that's infinite. Right? So let me write this out just to be sure. Right? So this is no solution. Am I still recording this? Okay, good. All right. No solution or infinitely many solutions okay all right got that now 
the only exception, and I don't see this happening on the regions, is that if one of these lines, if this line, if the yellow line is dotted and the red line solid, then you're going to have a bit of a dilemma on your hands. But they won't do that. So that's all I got to say about that. All right. So in that, so just focus on these two cases, no solution and infinite solutions. All right. Now, originally I was going to practice with you, but maybe, you know what? I don't see the need to because like it, this already graphed for you. And the only thing I would have done is change the symbols, maybe. Maybe change the grade and equal to or less than equal to, and then you shade everything up here, and then you shade everything down here, right? And then that's it. So no, it doesn't really. No, we don't need to spend time on this. Okay, all right. No need for more practice. Even if we we're meeting in class, I probably wouldn't spend that much time practicing. All right. Now, this is more regions oriented, um, meaning we want to test a solution. Okay. So in math, in algebra. In this topic, all right, what I'm about to present you is what we call testing a solution, okay? And typically, there are two ways to do it, although even those two ways can be really combined into one, all right? Because doing things, because I, I feel like by now, doing things by hand and doing things on the TI-84 calculator, it's, it's, we use the calculator so much that, you know, they're, they're basically identical methods all right so let me tell let me just show you what testing a solution means okay so here for number three and four so for number three which order pairs in the solution set so okay so here we got a graph right one we got a dotted line right so that's less than because it's shaded below and here is shaded to the right, so that's greater than or equal to, because that's a solid line, right? So again, right, two things. Broken line, shaded underneath, means less than. Um, solid line, shaded to the right, means greater than or equal to, right? Even though it's not relevant entirely to this question, but I just want to show you how to read one and quickly. Now... Here are they saying, hey, which of these four points falls within the this solution area, right? Remember that? What's the best way for me to shade this in? Oh, yeah. Highlighter. All right. So I'll try to follow the line. Like this, right? So anything, I mean, technically it's even outside the graph paper because it's not like graph paper prevents us from having an answer, right? But any space within the highlighted area is fair game, right, for the solution. So here, right, this is the this is our solution. So let's see which of the points fall below that, all right? Let me use purple, all right, for my favorite team. All right, let's see, one negative four, that's already it. Let's see, hold on, one, negative four, that's right here. That's already it, so I think it's this one, but let me double check. Negative five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, somewhere up here, nope. Uh, five, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, that's up here, no. Negative seven, negative two, somewhere, somewhere over here, no. All right, so that's it, choice one. All right, see how easy that is, okay, all right. Uh, let's see, what's this? Which point is in the solution set? Same thing, right? So which is in the shaded area? By the way, we have to, hold on, let me just take a good look at this. So this is underneath that's up. Oh yeah, so it's just this area. So let me highlight that for you. It's this area. So this area, okay? Now, The reason why I made that statement just now about how this area doesn't count because for two reasons, all right? The obvious one is you see how there's no cross shading here, right? It's only straight up. But the other reason is because the boundary of the line of the other 
inequality is right here. Like the boundary is set here, right? So that that means anything outside of the boundary that's greater than, which is right here, doesn't count. Okay, so it's only this little purple pink area. Okay, so let's see. Which point is the solution set? You got to be careful. Sometimes they might say not the solution set. So zero, zero, nope. Three, three, where's three, three? Three, three is right. Oh, man, great question. What do you guys think of this one? Three, three. Yes or no? Yeah, it's not, all right? It's not because that's a dotted line. So you cannot include anything on the line as an answer. Okay, so let me just leave that there for now. All right, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, that's there, that looks good. And then lastly, two, three, two, three is right here. That's no good. Okay, so it's choice three. All right, see? All right, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're good. I could add a couple more. All right, now, and then after this, we're done. Oh, my God, how many, why are there so many questions? All right, tracing it, um, which point solution? So now here. They gave you the, they gave you the equation. All right, so if you want, you could isolate the Y, put it in the calculator to reproduce the graph. But for this particular question, we don't need that, right? Because all you have to do is um, just see which of these points fall in this intersection. Right now, let me just double check. So it's everything underneath and everything to the left. So it's actually this whole, yeah, it's actually this this area. Let me define the area for you guys. All right, I'll use green for my favorite country. Like this, it's actually this space. Okay, yeah, all right. Now, what am I talking about? Let's see. Um, which point, negative four, negative one, one, two, three, four, negative one, that's, that looks good. Two, three, that's somewhere out here, that's no good. One, one, you see, wow, they really like asking you guys these questions. One, one is right on the line, but remember what I just said? That's a dotted line, so that doesn't include anything on the actual dotted line as an answer, so you can't include that. Negative two, two, that's right, oh my, wow, that's right. Actually, is it? It's either right outside or right on the dotted line, so doesn't matter. Choice one, okay? Now, this one was on delta math. And this was also in the region, so it'll be good for us to go over. All right, which order pairs in the solution set? How do you get around this without, by the way, you can graph it, okay? So let me see if I can pause and graph it and show it to you. And then I can show you the other way of solving it. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so I, okay, so I just grafted it. Actually, I did not just graph it. Um, so I put in these, all right, including the greater than less than sign. But as the moment I did that, I knew I had to be careful because you notice how this one here, this one here is less than, but not equal to. So you're going to end up with a solid line for the first one when you're not supposed to. Okay, so let's look at the graph, right? There's your graph. So here's what you do. Right, keeping in mind that blue is actually a broken line, you can go over these choices, right? So if you look at zero three, if you look at zero three is zero three. Man, these things are so broken up. Zero three, that's up here. No, it didn't quite make it. Because zero three is in red only, it has to be red and blue, right? So that's no good. Two zero. One, two, zero. Yeah, that's that should be okay. All right, because it's in the let's call it the purple area. All right. Negative one zero. You see here, look, negative one zero is right here. Oh, I could write this. Oh, that's so cool. All right, I don't I hope you can see that magic circle that I just had. All right. So negative one zero, no, because this point, negative one zero, it's on um it's on a dotted line on blue, so that's no good, okay? You can't see that, but um, negative one, negative four, nope, that's blue only. So there you go, choice two. Now, in the event that, I don't know, when you're doing homework, let's just say, right? When you don't have a calculator, here's what you do, just plug it in. So for example, for this one, I'll plug in zero three, 
that won't work, right? Because if you put in zero for x and three here, right? I'm just substituting, right? Three is three less than four. It's true, but for this one, it won't work. So watch. So y is greater than or equal to negative x minus one. So y is three greater than or equal to negative zero minus one. Okay. Let's see, I'm just double checking. Three is three greater than, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Did I do something wrong? Hold on. All right, I gotta press pause again. All right, I made like the ultimate mistake. Of course, this is two, so no, not true, right? Three is not less than two, so that's why one is not the answer. So if you do the same process with two zero, you will get them both. Both statements will be true. Let's just put it that way, okay? So um, now I'm hitting the 15 minute mark. So hold on, let me press pause again. Okay, you know what? So this is the part where if you're at home, if you're the cohort that's staying at home today, uh, I'm gonna make this as optional. All right, meaning I'm gonna have a, I'll put a separate video in Delta Math for today also, where I go over these three questions. Okay, so, all right, so this is the optional and I'm going to tell myself to edit this part. All right, so, this is where we cut. OMG, that was so good.